following along the secrets for crimping a crimp bead, we've connected a long length of AccuFlex beading wire to our clasp. I strung on a series of beads in a random pattern and added a crimp bead at the end of this one little section. I'll add in a new length of AccuFlex beading wire following the secrets to um, branches. I'll just add this beading wire into place and crimp the crimp tube using crimping pliers. And then once that's crimped and secure, we'll cover it with a crimp cover. So following along with the crimp cover secrets, cover both crimp beads for a professional finish. From the two strands of AccuFlex beading wire, I've added a section of beads, including a couple of crimp beads. And some of these crimp beads will be used later to secure clusters of beads along the beading wire, and we'll do that near the end. But for now, we're just really building this up so that we have a lot of strands to create our design with. And you can see we're already at three strands and we'll continue to have this grow and get more and more full. And now this pattern has grown and grown to about 12 strands of AccuFlex. And along the way I've added some clusters of beads and as well as covered a lot of the crimp beads with crimp covers. And that's just so as we're progressing we're remembering what we've done and taking care of business as we've progressed and we're going to continue to build and then just start working our way to a more full central focused part of the necklace. As our design has gotten fuller, we have added in more beads to fill in some of that um, multi-strand section and to really give this a beautiful amount of color as well as texture and sparkle. And along the way, again, we have these beaded sections that are going to be uh, strategically placed once the completed necklace is um, in order so that we can you know determine where we really want to have them. Uh, just as a, a little side note my boys really refer to this as the hairy monster and as you can see it gets a little unruly at this point but we're going to slowly start working it back into control. So the necklace has gotten extremely full but meanwhile we've also been able to progress and crimp layers back together so that we are slowly bringing the entire necklace up into one strand ready to attach to the clasp. This little guy, this is, uh, just helps keep the beads in place while I was building the necklace. So just crimping crimping that final crimp connecting this entire design together rounding the crimp nice and neat double check to make sure it's secure and we'll cut that strand down. And then you would cover that with a crimp cover. Now some of these other strands that we've left free, I'd like to take advantage of them and add, just pick one, any one, and add a charm to it to make the necklace have a little bit more pizzazz, almost like a mobile. You have some strands hanging out there. So I'll string on a crimp bead, um, put on a rondelle. The loop on a charm or pendant. Pass the wire 
back through the rondelle, back through the crimp bead, tighten that up, and then crimp the crimp bead in place. Round it so it's nice and neat. Check it to make sure it's secure. Tighten it up just a little bit more. Okay. Trim the excess wire. And then cover the crimp bead with a crimp cover. And repeat that process for as many of the loose strands as you'd like. And once you're sure that you don't need any of the other extras you've saved, just cut them free and cover the crimped crimp bead with crimp covers. For some of the beaded sections that we've left floating for now, it's time to make a decision and decide where we really want to have them live. And this is a little bit of a different process for crimping a, a crimp bead in that we're going to use chain nose pliers. So to keep these in a floating position, showing some of the Accuflex, because it is that very pretty color, just using chain nose pliers, flatten the crimp bead in place and just make sure that it stays where you want it. Nice and secure there. And then within that beaded section, you have another crimp bead and use the same technique to flatten the crimp bead. And now that section of beads just floats in place.